Hello, I'm Helen Lockhead, National President. Welcome to the announcement of the 2020 Australian Institute of Architects National Prizes. The presentation of these prizes is a little different this year, as you can see. And as always, the achievements of our winners are outstanding. Well, I'd love to be presenting these in person. I'm very honoured to be announcing these virtually today. The Australian Institute of Architects has almost 90 years supported a range of prizes and competitions that recognise and reward the amazing contributions in the fields of architecture and built environment. Now, in these strange and challenging times, it's even more important to continue to recognise the achievements of our profession and the individuals who contribute in so many exceptional ways. So, I'd like to make the first announcement today, which is the Student Prize for the Advancement of Architecture. This prize recognises the most outstanding contribution of an individual or group towards the advancement of architecture, in particular, those who provide leadership among their fellow students and within the profession. The jury has awarded the 2020 prize to Chantelle Fry, University of Adelaide. Since commencing her Bachelor of Architecture at the University of Adelaide in 2015, Chantelle Fry has been committed to fostering student engagement and showcasing student work to the wider architecture community. She is genuine in her approach and conducts herself with openness and integrity. Chantelle has shown an unrelenting passion for the profession through her mentorship of her peers and high school students. She strives to create a student community that embraces the values that she completely models and represents. Enthusiasm, inclusivity and leadership. Congratulations, Chantelle Fry. Here's what Chantelle had to say about receiving this prize. Thank you, Helen. I feel very honoured to be accepting this prize. I'm a firm believer there's no iron team and I couldn't have done it without the support of my family, uni mates, Adelaide Uni, everyone involved with SONA and especially the SA chat. Thank you for welcoming a passionate, quirky country girl into the community and allowing me to contribute. I'm excited to continue my development within the industry and keep working for the advancement of architecture. Thank you. Congratulations, Chantelle. The next prize to be announced is the Paula Whitman Leadership in Gender Equity Prize. This prize recognises exceptional leadership and an outstanding contribution to the advancement of gender equity in architectural practice, education and governance. The prize is an initiative of the Institute's National Committee for Gender Equity. And I'm very pleased to announce the 2020 prize this year goes to Parla. Launched in 2012, Parla is synonymous with gender equity in architecture. Combining research, education, advocacy and engagement, Parla's work has led to significant changes in policy, structure and attitudes across the profession. While Parla has many contributors, most notably it has been led by eight women. Naomi Stead, Justine Clark, Karen Burns, Julie Willis, Jill Mathewson, Susie Ashworth, Alison Cleary and Sarah Lynn Rees each of which has made long-standing and significant contributions to gender equity. Parla's compelling and wide-reaching project work to transform architecture into a more equitable and robust profession demonstrates outstanding leadership in gender equity. Congratulations, Parla. Here's what the team had to say about receiving the prize. Thank you, Helen. We're honoured and particularly delighted to receive an award named after Paula Whitman, a wonderful, warm person whose work was a significant precursor to our own. So I'm here to accept this award on behalf of my colleagues, co-founders Naomi, Jill, Julie and Susie, and our new colleagues, Alison Cleary and Sarah Lynn Reese. We also acknowledge Karen Burns, our parlour comrade for, men, for the first seven years, who um, also named the organisation, and our fellow researchers on the project the research project that first led to Paula, Sandra Caggio Grady, Amanda Rowan and Gillian Whitehouse. We work with many wonderful people across Australia and this work is supported by our fabulous Paula partners and our Paula friends. So thanks to everybody and we look forward to doing much more work together in the future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations to all the Paula team. Now to the Leadership and Sustainability Prize. 
This prize recognizes exceptional leadership and an outstanding contribution to the advancement of sustainability and the built environment, recognizing an individual or group's achievements through architecture, effective advocacy, education, and community engagement. I'm very pleased to announce the 2020 Leadership in Sustainability Prize goes to Stephen Choi from the Living Future Institute of Australia. Stephen Choi has an extremely diverse career from education, advocacy and practice. He has been extremely engaged to enable delivery of change within sustainability across multiple areas. Stephen is focused on those in society who are forgotten, those with unmet needs and those without access to architects or professionals broadly. This advocacy is part of Stephen's role as the Executive Director of the Living Future Institute of Australia. What impressed the jury in particular was Stephen's ability to take these principles to practice. Congratulations, Stephen Choi. So let's hear what Stephen has to say about receiving the prize. Um, firstly, I didn't expect so many photographs of myself, but um, mostly thank you very much for the award and all the people who nominated me without me realising and the Institute for continuing the work, particularly during this time. Um, I'm really excited to be doing the work I'm doing and I'm really glad to be able to contribute to something that's so important and I'm looking forward to working with um, the, the rest of you. Congratulations again, Stephen. Now to the National President's Prize that recognises an individual's contribution to the advancement of architecture in any significant way. This includes support of the architectural profession, effective advocacy, architectural debate and discourse, community engagement, or any other contribution deemed notable. This year, I am delighted to award the prize to Clover Moore, Lord Mayor of the City of Sydney. Lord Mayor of Sydney, Clover Moore, is a vocal advocate of quality architecture, progressive policies, and ambitious action on climate change. Her vision and leadership over 30 years has systematically transformed the city of Sydney into a city with global reputation, delivering award-winning buildings, open spaces and transport infrastructure, instituting design excellence as public policy and initiating progressive solutions to complex social and environmental challenges. Her commitment to the creation of a lively, livable and just city is to be applauded. Congratulations. Clover Moore, Lord Mayor of Sydney. Let's hear what Clover had to say when I spoke to her earlier. Thank you, Helen Lockhead and the Institute of, um, of Architects. I am honoured to receive the Australian Institute of Architects President's Award for 2020. And I want to acknowledge the vision and guidance of the CEO, Monica Baroni, our Design Director, Bridget Smythe, and our Planning Director, Graham Yarn at the City of Sydney. It has been a team effort. My return to city government in 2004 was unplanned and circumstantial and presented challenges and opportunities. City boundaries had just been expanded. Population densities were rapidly increasing and the largest urban renewal area in the south southern hemisphere, Green Square, was moribund. I wanted the design of private development, as well as our public projects, parks and open spaces and our community facilities to be of the highest design standards. I also wanted contemporary uses for heritage sites to be sensitively handled and our goal for a work walkable city drove our City of Villages concept. The growing importance by 2005 of the threat of climate change partic was particularly critical in big cities and uh, was becoming an increasingly important factor in project designs. Broadly, our design excellence aspirations required design competitions for development over a specific value, and we invited eminent architects, planners, landscape professionals and artists to be part of our design and advisory panels to advise on public projects as well as private development. And so I attribute this award also to their valuable guidance and input, many of whom are AIA members and even past presidents. As a democratic institution, we consult with city residents and businesses on our significant projects. And in one notable case, a local resident, not an architect, thought the design of a public facility was inappropriate in its parkland setting. And the ultimate design overseen by the design advisory panel 
won multiple awards, including the Sulman Medal. It hasn't always been easy, and with tough decisions such as our cycleways and increased densities, I had to stand my ground with critics and take the people on the journey. So I again thank you for this great honour. Congratulations, Clover. That brings us to the highest honour for an architect in Australia, the Australian Institute of Architects Gold Medal. This year, the jury has awarded the gold medal to John Wardle. John Wardle is an architect's architect. He is a designer of consummate skill whose works, from the smallest intricate piece of joinery to complex high-rise buildings, celebrate both individual craft and the broader production processes. His works reposition the role of the architect as chief designer in the process of making a building and are the outcome of a studio-based collaborative practice established in 1986. More than three decades of honing skills to address often competing agendas purposefully and cogently has meant that John Wardle has created a practice of national stature and international repute, a practice where design excellence takes the prime position in every single project and at every scale. While his public buildings have become exemplars of quality for institutional and commercial patrons, Wardle's domestic projects continue the great Australian tradition of the single family house as the architect's laboratory for experiment and innovation. At a national level, he has twice been the recipient of the Sir Zelman Cowan Award for Public Buildings, the Robin Boyd Award for Residential Architecture twice, and the inaugural Daryl Jackson Award for Educational Architecture. Internationally, John was awarded the Jörn Utzon Award for International Architecture in 2019. Across the nation, John Wardle has restored faith in what architects do best, the design of buildings that function well and please hand and eye. He is a most worthy candidate for the award of the 2020 Gold Medal. Congratulations, John Wardle. Congratulations on this well-deserved honour, John. So let's hear from John now. Thank you, Helen. Um, thank you very much. It's a tremendous honour to win the gold medal. Thank you. And your fellow jury members, uh, Claire Cousins, Geoffrey London, Peter Elliott and Wendy Lewin, uh, thank you all greatly. Thank you very much to the Institute of Architects. Um, it was seems a lifetime ago that uh, Claire Cousins rang to make sure I was in the office um, and uh, when Helen and Wendy came to visit. It certainly was a very different life that we were leading then. Um, at that time, I had to keep a secret this great honour. It was received with absolute gratitude. Uh, I was deeply humbled, uh, greatly moved by it. Uh, it was just a wonderful moment to share with a very, very few people. I'm greatly looking forward now to sharing it with so many. Um, this medal has only one name on it, but really, in by the very nature of what we do as architects, and specifically, I think my practice, um, it really does acknowledge the work and contributions of so many people over a significant period of time. Uh, the many remarkable clients that have um, joined with us and supported us along the way, great builders who have built so purposefully and so beautifully, just as we had asked of them. Uh, I thank them all greatly. Um, firstly, then also to my fellow directors, thank you all, and, and, and I hope you share with me in this uh, this great honour. I'm sure you do. And to our remarkable staff, those with us at the moment, and those who have shared the journey with us and along the way, and devoted so much of their uh, their commitment to their working life to, to the making of this practice and the various projects that have been celebrated here with this award. Um, to my family, who have allowed their lives to be intertwined constantly with the, the, the creation and the workings of an architectural practice, I thank them very deeply. Um, there is something particularly heartening uh, in accepting this award at this time, a time of disruption and unprecedented change. Um, although it is a time of real hardship uh, for many uh, within our community, I think there's a particularly strong light illuminating the worth of what we as architects do. I know through the lens of my own practice, 
uh, is contributing across the various projects. So I, I can I can see the work that my staff do really across every aspect of architectural practice at the moment, seeing ways to engage with many others within and beyond our practice as we share the pens across digital whiteboards and take part in vast array of stakeholder engagement and look into the houses of many people who would normally be around a meeting table and now here they are from so many vantage points coming together and do what we ask clients to do to uh, to um, generously uh, give their understanding of their requirements in the making of a building. Working with consultants, um, visiting building sites uh, at the moment, um, just to see all of this work that's being done is particularly heartening. I'm sure all of you have your own versions of these same stories. Um, I can't help feeling out of these experiences at this time, the qualitative aspects of what we do as a profession. Um, our spirit of inquiry and our invention will prevail as we address a new world, a world with um, that's greatly changed. I'm sure we all will partake in that um, with a, a sense of, re of focus on all that we must continue to do as architects. Now, I'm looking forward to celebrating. Um, uh, I think now, firstly, with my staff who are awaiting a lunch they have seen no reason for until this moment, um, and, and then eventually with you all. I'm greatly looking forward to coming around and visiting every state in Australia and, and um, giving the uh, address, uh, hopefully by, by plane, by car if I have to, I'll get there to um, see so many of you and see so many great friends that I've made uh, in all states of Australia over so many years of practice. So for so many people involved in this, I thank you all. We look forward to John's tour later in the year. Details will be available on the website over the coming months, so watch out for them. So now, on behalf of the Institute, I would like to once again congratulate all the winners for the 2020 prizes. And thank you for joining us for these announcements today.